the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution
changes into liquid state and again into gaseous state. Heat energy is released when a gas changes into liquid state and again into solid state. That is ice changes into water and again to steam on absorbing heat. Steam changes into water and back to ice on releasing heat. A change in which no new substances are formed is physical change. Physical change involves change of state, shape and size of a substance. Example, cutting in vegetable, melting ice cube and the last topic is chemical change. A change in which where new substances are formed is chemical change. It is a permanent change. For example, turning of milk into curd, cooking food, break, uh, burning pepper. Thank you friends. Stay home, stay safe and healthy. Bye. Thank you Shri Lishmi. That was very fabulous and sweet of you. Children, did you all give her a clap? Yes. Now it's the time to move to the third chapter. Isn't it? Very interesting chapter. Now, before moving to the chapter, let us see a video. Okay? A spectacle of flowers, blooming flowers. Isn't it? Did you all like it? Yes. Who doesn't like flowers? All of us like flowers. Isn't it? I feel each of you, each child is like a different kind of flower. All of you together will make a beautiful garden in this world. Isn't it? I believe that. Okay. Where do you usually see the flowers? When we see them hanging in plants. Isn't it? Now, let me introduce the third chapter for you. What is it? It is flower to flower. Where do we use flowers? For what purpose do you use flowers? Yes, these days we are using flowers to do beautiful atakalam in front of our house. Isn't it? In the front yard of our houses. All the ten days we will make big and beautiful colourful Atakala. It's very interesting, isn't it? All family members sitting together and making a beautiful Atakala. Now we have a competition also in our school, isn't it? Oh. Then for what purpose we use? Sometimes in movies we see flowers are used to express your love. Your, it always, these flowers help you to express your emotions like love. Sometimes in burial grounds for marriage purposes, etc. Isn't it? Now, we will see one more picture. What is this? Yes, it's Sahara Desert seen in African continent. Can you see any vegetation there? It's a barren land. What Sahara Desert like this before also? Not at all. Long, long back, Sahara looked like this. Amazing, surprising, isn't it? Then how did it turn like this? Why did it become a desert? Due to extreme climatic conditions, less water source was there and then there was no vegetation, so no flowers, since no flowers, no plants. No new flowers are there, so no new plants. That is why the beautiful Sahara has turned into a barren Sahara desert. What did we understand from this incident? We understood that flowers are very important for reproduction. A plant has to to bear flowers to produce a new plant. So what is there in this plant which helps to 
we produce? We will see that one by one. Okay? Before that, we will see a picture in your textbook and the cup. Did you see the picture? You liked it? Yes, beautiful, amazing garden with wonderful, colorful flowers. And see the butterflies? The butterflies are taking out the nectar from the flowers. Okay. Do you see flowers only in garden? No, sometimes we keep indoor plants also. Well, do all the butterflies visit all the flowers? I don't think so. Butterflies are very choosy. They sit only on some flowers. Isn't it? Okay. Now tell me the names of some flowers which you like the most. I know. First one will be rose. Then sunflower, shoe flower, dahlia, jasmine. The list goes on. So we can list down the name of some flowers which you like the most. Okay. Now, look at some of the flowers given. Do all the flowers look alike? No. So, what is the difference you see in these flowers? Shall we list them one by one? First one. Yes. What is the first difference you see? The number of petals. Look at the shoe flower. It has got five petals, sometimes four. Rose, more number of petals. Sunflower, more, even more number of petals. And how about dahlia, very minute petals. So the petals differ in all these flowers. What is number two? Color. The color is different for each flower. The color varies for each flower. That is the second difference. What is the third difference? Can you tell me? Fragrance. What is fragrance? Fragrance means smell. So, some flowers are fragrant and some are non-fragrant. Okay? Now, we have listed three important variations which we can see in different flowers. What are they? Number of petals. Color and fragrance. These are some of the variations we see in all the flowers. Okay? Children, we know very well for what purposes flowers are used. Yes, we know that. They are used for marriages, for decoration purpose, to express your emotions, whether it might be sorrow or happiness. For all these purposes, we use flowers. Now what is the use of flower for a plant? Yes, for a plant, what is the use of a flower? We had a small idea about that when we discussed about Sahara Desert. Yes, if a flower is not there, a plant cannot produce. We learned that already. A small idea we already had. Isn't it? Now, what is there inside the flower which helps in reproduction? Isn't it? When a plant gives birth to another plant, that process we call it as reproduction. So what is there in a flower which helps in this reproduction? For that, we have to study about the parts of a flower. What are the different parts of a flower? Okay. Before going to that, you will see a picture given in your textbook. Yes, can you see a picture of shoe flower where all the six parts are given? Yes, what are the six different parts? Andresian, calyx. Gynesium, Corolla, Thalamus and Pedicel. Isn't it? Okay. Now we will discuss one by one all the six parts. What is Andresium? Andresium is the main part of a flower. 
okay what is corolla it's a colorful petals you see isn't it the colorful part of a flower is called as corolla what is gynecium well gynecium is seen inside the ovary okay there gynecium is a female part of a flower okay now what is calyx calyx is the green part which holds the flower and what is thalamus thalamus is the entire part which holds the weight of the flower thalamus is a part which holds the flower and pedicel is the stalk okay which connects the flower with the plant okay these are all the six parts now i'm closing down this video session what you have to do you have to take a new page write the chapter chapter's name that is flower to flower put on the date and draw the picture of a shoe flower and name all the six parts you have to draw it beautifully okay so this is your first assignment happy all of you all of you children enjoy it in a very pompous way but in a restrained way okay so bye and see you in a next video session with more interesting facts about flowers okay bye